English Across the Pond. Hello! Hello, 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 hello. Hi! Welcome to English Across the Pond. My name is Jennifer, your co-host, one half of this amazing podcast. I am from the United States. My specialty is teaching you American English. My name's Jennifer. Hi, hello, how are you? That pause probably means it's my turn to speak. Hello, everybody out there in podcast land. My name is Dan. My speciality is playing guitar and having conversations. Um, But I'm also known as an English language teacher. And it's my great pleasure to be with you here today, giving you examples of British English. Hi. Hi. We are here every single week, right here on this podcast, giving you American and British English delight. We are here every week talking about different topics. This month we've talked about failing, we've talked about being calm, we've celebrated five years, and this week we're talking about opinions. So each week has a new topic which seem like random topics, but we choose these topics to give you, our listeners, the ability to hear different types of conversations about different topics, to give you the skills to go off into your own environment and situations and use English more naturally as well. Did you know that we have learning materials for this episode? and every episode sometimes we still get messages messages saying that people want a transcript or people want more vocabulary so if you did not know hopefully now you will we have a membership for this podcast the membership is going to give you even more you'll get a longer language focus diving deeper into the vocabulary you hear from this episode. That's Dan and I talking about and teaching more vocabulary from this episode and all the episodes. You get transcripts, vocabulary lists. You also get a pronunciation and grammar lesson each month to help with your fluency. And a private telegram group to connect and engage with our community as well as group speaking classes. These classes are growing. We have people from all over the world showing up and communicating together. And we would love for you to join us. It's not our opinion that it's good. We know it's good. Our members tell us that it's good. Right, Dan? Right, Jennifer. Oh, yeah. So sign up today. Go over to englishacrossthepond.com slash membership. Dan? Mm-hmm. Are you the type of guy that often gives his opinions? Mm, um, on things that I feel sort of like knowledge of the... <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start again. On things that I feel knowledgeable about, then yes. But I'm always the first to put my hand up and say, I don't really know about this. But I might say... I don't really know about this, but from what I understand, this. So I'll throw in a caveat, you know, to try to make it clear that I'm a layman. I'm not an expert. But generally, no. I mean, if somebody really, really wants your opinion, they'll ask. And if they don't really want your opinion, then probably, like, don't give it. Because no one's listening. (laughs) Can you imagine a world that took that advice? If nobody (laughs) asks for your opinion, don't give it. No. (laughs) I think there would be maybe a lot less frustration. I think there could be more peace, maybe less misunderstanding. Well, it's that thing, you know, don't get me started. (laughs) Don't get me started. (laughs) Don't get me started. It's my, my belief the whole world is talking and nobody's listening kind of thing, you know. So actually a student of ours, who I won't mention, but a student of ours said, like, you know, I'm kind of shy. I'm not just, like, 
not so good at speaking English because it's difficult. I don't actually like speaking too much in my own language. And I thought, what a great person. <laughs> uh, yeah. I wish... Somebody who keeps their opinions to themselves. Oh, you know, someone who's thinking, maybe I won't say anything. And, you know, maybe through shyness, that's not coming from a very positive place. But just the fact that somebody's willing to bite their tongue. You know, and not say, yeah. I know, I know, I know, listen to me, listen to me. And everyone just talking over the top of one another. Jennifer, if I'm in a situation like that, I begin to retreat into my shell. I just sort of disappear into the sofa or chair as everyone shouts over the top of each other. Alcohol mm. doesn't help, you know. Alcohol doesn't oh, help. Oh, God. Oof. You're telling me. Oof. Alcohol definitely doesn't help that type of situation. Everybody gets a little bit more courageous under the influence of alcohol. Um, have you ever heard the expression, <clears throat> opinions are like a-holes, everybody has them. A-holes, of course, me being the bad word A-S-S-holes. I'm not saying it because this is a family show. You're not saying it, but you you spelt it, spelt it out. I spelled it. I spelled <laughs> you did. it. You did. Um, yes. That's what I, I have, have to do heard. with my son. That's what I do with my son when I'm talking about something he, he I don't want him to know about. I say, you know, the C O O K I E S's in the cabinet. You know. There's a really famous old song called D I V O R C E which I'm old enough to remember, but that's what the pet of the song is about. Like, that's why we have to talk about D-I-V-O and they spell it out so the kids don't understand. Oh, it's like I Tammy Wynette. It's an old country, country and Western song. Yes. Oh, okay. To answer your question, yes, I have heard of the expression opinions are like assholes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Everybody has them. <laughs> I've done it now. Yeah, everybody does. So that obviously is an expression meaning just like everybody has a butt. Everybody has that and everybody has an opinion. Why do people like to give their opinions so much? In your expert opinion. Because everybody thinks they know best. Yeah. I get exasperated. This sort of thing drives me up the wall. It drives me crazy. That, yeah. Um... And you know, more and more now, I, I mentioned, I think, a few episodes ago, I, I'm sort of not bothering to give anybody my opinion anymore. And like I say, people do ask. And, and then I think it's good to say, I know that you asked, but like, do you really want me to tell you? Because, you know, sometimes we just ask, you know, when we say, what do you think? We don't mean, what, what do you think? We just mean, I finished saying my thing. You know, what do you think doesn't always mean what do you think. It's just a way of ending. So I noticed you said, what That's do you tough. think? Would you like me to tell you what I think? Because I will. <laughs> Trust me, I will yeah. if you want me to. But um, I think often as well that mm, you can tell somebody, I mean, honestly, you can tell somebody the right answer and because they're not ready to hear it, it goes in one ear and out of the other. And, the and other. Mm -hmm. no, no word of a lie, my friend. Six months later, they come back and they say, I think I've, uh, I think I've sorted it out. And you think, oh yeah, what are you going to do? And they explain it and you think, that's what I told you six I, months. <laughs> I, yeah. But they mm -hmm. weren't ready to hear it. Ready. So there's absolutely yes. no point. I'm going to start banging the table in a minute. Yeah, I know. Drives me nuts. I, I agree. We live yeah, in we I live in a world where everybody should have all of the answers all of the time. You know, like it's kind of maybe on Instagram, everyone looks, should look beautiful all the time, and we should all know everything all the time. It's almost like there's a shame and a disgrace in saying, "Hey, I don't know about that, but I'd like to learn." Could you explain? Who says that? It's such mm -hmm. a nice thing to say, but nobody says it. Sorry, I'll calm down. Mm -hmm. Some people do. Some people do. Yeah, they do. They do say, oh, that's really interesting. It's lovely to be listened to, Jennifer. There's nothing nicer in this world than somebody actively listening. And it happens so rarely. People just go, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm taking the floor. What about you? Uh-huh. I was going to pretend to mm. not be actively listening to you, but I think that, you know... Uh. 
Um, you've done I, that. You've done that for two hundred and fifty episodes. <laughs> <laughs> 262 <laughs> nah I listen to you I'll actively listen because I don't want you to catch me off guard and ask me a question I'm going to be like uh, oh, huh? oh yeah uh, mm, uh, yeah, huh? yeah. Uh, you glitched mm. <laughs> um, so I was going to say I agree that I think that people maybe do think they know everything I think people are excited to share but Giving people the benefit of the doubt, mm. I also think that some people just want to help. Yeah. You know? So I think that, um, you know, you're my friend. Maybe you're telling me about a problem or you're, like, telling me something that maybe I do think I have a solution to. Or maybe it's not the solution, but it could be a solution. And I just feel like, gosh, Dan's having a really hard time. I want to help him. So maybe I could give him this opinion. But, like you said, it's not always ready to be heard or ready to be applied. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, even when people, myself included, have the best intentions at heart, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people want to just have a rant. They just want to vent. They just want to talk about something and not necessarily get an opinion. Yeah. You know? So, I think that... Although we don't do this, I'm not suggesting that I do this. I think in that situation, it's kind of like, look, you know, if this is obviously something that you need to talk about, you'd like to talk about, and I am going to listen, but I'm not going to give you an opinion. And when you finish talking and you've got it all off your chest, maybe we'll talk about something else, but I'm not going to give you my opinion. You know, go ahead. I yeah. Would that work? <laughs> is that a bit weird? <laughs> No, not weird at all. I think that there is actually in like literature and books and articles and things that are about like listening, especially with like marital Mm -hmm. type of issues or relationship things Mm -hmm. that if you're, you know, if you're finding yourself at a constant kind of struggle with somebody, you're arguing a lot or, you know, maybe with like a, a, a partnership, somebody is complaining about something all the time you know, about work or something. And then the other person is like, oh, well, why don't you, why don't you talk to that person? Or you should talk to them. Or if I were you, I would talk to them or whoever this person is giving advice. And then the other person's like, well, no, I don't want to do that because, Mm. you know, the person listening often can get frustrated. Like, well, then why are you telling me? If you're not going to take my advice, then stop telling me about it. And then it's like, but I need you for support. And now I can't talk to you, you know, so it can kind of create this issue where, yeah. If the person listening, so this is what I've, I've read and I've, I've, I've learned about, you know, if the person listening does take the time to say like, okay, do you want me here to listen and support you or do you want me here to offer any solutions? Mm-hmm. And then the person speaking can have the floor to be like, I just really need someone to listen to me. And you're like, okay. And then you just know all you're doing is listening. 100% presence. Yeah, I think there's almost, I can imagine, I totally, I totally agree with that, but I can almost imagine, I'm thinking of like, you know, picturing one of my friends and we're at the coffee shop and say, would you like me just to listen or give you an opinion? They're like, oh no, they almost feel like, well, if I'm going to say something, you should say something. So they'd say, oh no, no, I want your opinion to be polite sort of thing, you know, do you know, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Which... I'm not yeah. saying that's right. I'm just saying I can see my friends going, of course I want your opinion because they wouldn't want to be rejecting your advice, even though actually it's not that good for them. So, yeah, um, but it would be nice if the whole world wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be heard. Don't we all want to, oh, we're all jumping up and down, waving our arms about everybody going, look at me, look at me, look at me. And one of the, mm-hmm. one of the ways that we do that is by going, do you know what you should do? Do you know what I think you should do? Now, yeah. you're not going to like this, uh, Elaine. You're not going to like this, but I am going to say, I'm going to speak to you from the heart, Elaine. I'm going to tell you what I think. And we make ourselves important by giving advice. I think we, we're being heard, aren't we? Yeah. Ugh. So it's kind of like the person giving advice wants to be heard just as much as the person yeah. talking yeah. who may or may not even be asking for advice. Yeah. Whew. That's deep, Dan. Well, That's some deep stuff. What, but what can happen is, sorry, I'm going to keep on going. What can happen is yeah. that the person starts to tell all of their problems and starts to maybe get 
making progress with it because you know talking things through is very beneficial they pause for breath and the other person says oh tell me about it do you know what i did when i was like i tell you what and suddenly all of that potential um progress is stopped because you feel like oh oh it's gone now you know because they stole Mm. it from you i've had to 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 cut my mom off in conversations quite often to be like okay mom i i just want to get through the story i don't need to hear about you and the 17 examples that you have that are related to this i get (laughs) this is not about you right now i just want you to listen to me (laughs) <laughs> just kidding but but if you are kind of saying that and it's your mum is your mum like oh I'm sorry I'm awful go ahead or is she like but I want to say what I want to say mm, kind of a mixture of both sometimes does one or the other sometimes just keeps on going sometimes won't even hear me when I ask it's a mix it's a mixed bag with that one yeah yeah difficult mother daughter well mm-hmm. you know family relationships difficult ones yeah um, another question I have is, what is it that kind of triggers us when we get the opinions of others? Like, if we took into consideration everything you said. Yeah. Everybody just wants to be heard. Everyone just wants to be listened to. We've taken into consideration when I said people are just speaking, like, have the best intentions at heart. They're just trying to support and help. If we just thought about that when somebody was giving us an opinion that we didn't want or ask for, that could also help kind of continue peace in the world. Yeah, totally. What is so triggering to get advice? Well, I, I, if, I think what you mean is like, um, what can be really triggering about asking someone for advice is they tell you the truth and you don't like it. <laughs> or even the, the op or kind of related to that so like when i say like what triggers us just to make sure everybody understands Mm. like when something triggers you it kind of like stirs up it creates it causes kind of some negative emotions it it causes you to feel or maybe to react in some Mm -hmm. way and so what is triggering like if i'm talking to my mother-in-law and of course this never happened Mm. if i'm talking to my mother-in-law about my newborn infant baby Mm. and she gives me an opinion that i don't ask for why why is that so frustrating to me and of course i might i realize i'm asking a question about me and myself but i think that's kind of the general idea is somebody gets an opinion they didn't ask for and then they feel really frustrated that somebody gave them that opinion or they you know like you get upset when someone gives you an opinion you didn't ask for. Why does that upset us? We d- even if we didn't ask for it, like what is so triggering? Does that make sense? Is that too kind of heavy of a question? Or no, I th- but I think that um, I think with motherhood, I think that's one of the hu- you know that's a huge thing where to be. Um, I think maybe all mothers feel that they want to do it their own way. Um, and it can be real. I'm I'm not a mother, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, so th- that can be really triggering. I think where, um, particularly if people give you an unsolicited opinion you didn't ask, but you're there maybe like changing the diaper. And it's like, don't you want to do it this way? And you just think I'm going to stab you in the head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm. It's very triggering, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe it's because we feel, maybe because it's almost like when somebody gives us advice that we didn't ask for, I think it's because we probably take it personally yeah. in terms of like, oh, they think I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah. I do know what I'm doing and I didn't ask for this advice. When That might not even be it. But actually, as a mother... Nobody really knows what... I mean, it's all making up as we go along because the baby develops so quickly and everything changes so fast. And maybe the thing that we're doing, maybe there is a better way to do it because we're not totally sure. I mean, we've found a way that kind of works. So I think that's maybe we're on shaky ground anyway as that mother. But then the other person Mm. is like, well, 
well, look at it when that person, let's say her name is uh, Diane, when Diane says, uh, Jennifer, I think if you just put him on his side, you think to yourself, what do you know? Your kids are all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I've never reacted to that extreme. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, uh, but, you know, um, because it's, it's only one opinion versus... Uh, we don't have certificates and qualifications and go to university really about motherhood. So it really yeah. is just an opinion versus an opinion, which we, you know, sometimes in life we're kind of like, well, he has been playing the guitar for 15 years. I will listen. Whereas, you know what I mean? But whereas with motherhood, yeah. yeah. Oh, I like this topic. So, Meaty. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good one. I think that getting advice can be triggering even outside of motherhood, though. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, totally. I was only just an example, yeah. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I think it definitely has to do with like that thing. So there's the book, The Four Agreements. And one of the four agreements is don't take things personal. Pfft, you're joking. <laughs> that is, I mean, that's the, that's the secret sauce right there. Yeah. You know, we could, we could hear what someone else has to say, you know. The, someone can tell me how to put a diaper on my baby or someone could tell me what they think I should do about this work issue or someone could tell me about blah, blah, blah. And you know what I can do? No. Oh, yeah, thank you for that. Oof, you're you're and, hoping for a lot. You know, oh, thanks. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'll think about that. Maybe I never want to think about it ever. Maybe I think it was the biggest crock of crap I've ever you know, yeah, heard. Yeah. But what What if we just say, oh, all right, thank you, and we move on? <laughs> the way you say thank you, though, is like, you know, your bright red, <laughs> clenched teeth. Your eyes twitching. <laughs> thank you! <laughs> thank you. But I really am saying a genuine, like, yeah, thanks. No, yeah. So, um, God, have you? there's that new movie I'm going to go see. What, you know? What do you think about it? Ha <laughs> ha. Opinions are everywhere. We ask for opinions all the time. Non, I think non-intentionally. Oh. Uh, what do you think about blah, blah, blah? Or, I don't think oh, I do. Maybe know. I do, but I don't think, do I? I don't think I do. I think your number one question is what you know about. Yeah, I always and that's ask just like, other people. What's going maybe. on, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. It's very interesting, actually. And uh, really, I mean, I do like to sort of read about the, these kinds of things and, you know, investigate, like, you know, how our brain reacts and things. So fasc so fascinating. And uh, that's why it can be really good in a cafe situation to just sit back and just observe how people are interacting with each other and the way that people say things that they don't mean or do mean, subplots. He's just moved his phone into the middle of the table. Is that some sort of challenge? Oh, yeah. I, I love that sort of thing. <laughs> Episode 263, watching other people at the table. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. I'd lo I would love that. Well, thanks for sharing your opinion with me each and every week, Mr. Dan. I so appreciate podcasting with you. It's a pleasure. Likewise. And if I did need advice... You'd be near, around the top of the list. Nice. Which Good to know? I'm not saying you're third. I mean, there's a group of people at the top who are all like first, and you're one of them. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. No worries. You are my uh, fill-in therapist at times as well. So, yeah. The feeling is mutual. Yeah. Episode two five no two seven nine to two eight nine. Jennifer on the couch. Joe, we would need a lot more episodes than that. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks, everybody, for Until listening. Until next time. We would love to... Bye. We would love... Oh, sorry. I wanted to say we would love to know about you and your opinions. Do you like getting them? Do you like giving them? Let us know in Telegram. Okay, now I can say bye. 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 Hello and welcome back. This is The Language Focus, the part of the podcast where we take a closer look at some of the vocabulary from this week's chat. What you're going to hear is part of a longer conversation, over 10 minutes, that is available to our members. Let's do this.
for the record. For the record. Yeah. Notice the difference there. For. Fur. Do you ever say fur? No. Unless I'm talking about fur. The animal fur. Yeah. For the record is how we would say that in American English. And uh, in in British English, for, for the record. <laughs> for the record. For the record. For, for the record. Yeah. For the record. Good. Very nice. Suits you. Great expression. For the record. I use this all the time. Um, For the record... I just want to say, typically with my hand up like it is now, shaking my head, very expressive with my body as I'm talking. For the record, I use this phrase a lot. Yeah. Commonly used to say that what you're about to say is factual and it needs to be known. It is important information. For the record means like write this down, you know, record it, make sure people know I said it, make sure people know that it's true for the record opposite would be hey can we keep this hey off the record for a second off the record meaning like don't record it don't let it be known and like what you're about to say should be kept privately yeah off the record unofficially but also um for the record i think that if somebody has just told a story about you and it seems in that story that you might be a bit aggressive or that you might have um, been too forward with somebody or you might say, <clears throat> for the record, I would just like to point out that that story is one interpretation of what happened. So you might say it after something has been said just to say, yes. I, d I don't agree completely. So for the record... I actually was the one who helped her. Thank you very much, sort of thing. Yes, thank you for bringing that to our attention, that it definitely can be used after, too. See, that's why we need each other, Dan. Yeah, it's nice, Perfect isn't it? Because compliment. You, well, you did it to, You did the same thing a couple of weeks ago with me and added another, and that added another strand to the definition. Now, something I said in the episode was to retreat into one's shell. One's, of course, your shell, his shell. However, Jennifer is going to talk about in one ear and out the other. That's not in one's ear and out the other. That's actually in one ear and out the other. But mine, retreat into one's shell, retreat into my shell. He retreated into his shell. Actually, humans don't have shells. At least my human friends no. don't have shells. If you're thinking, what's a shell? Um, it's the hard outer casing that a snail uses, a turtle and a tortoise. Do you want, mm -hmm. do you want to hear... No, I was going to tell you a joke, but it's all right. Um, if you retreat into your shell, you can imagine a snail, if you know the animal a snail and if the snail is out of its shell and you tap on the shell lightly the snail will go back in because mm -hmm. well to protect itself but if humans do it then it's because they're extremely shy or embarrassed and they want to hide oh nice oh mm. <sighs> wow that was a good one. That definitely wasn't in one ear and out the other. No, ma'am. That was something I very much processed. I very much listened to. In one ear and out the other is a really common phrase. Mm. Often used to talk about kids who don't listen. Mm -hmm. Ugh, it's just in one ear and out the other, isn't it? That kid never listens to me. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And that is in one ear on one side and out to the other, meaning it doesn't pass through your brain. It doesn't stick. The information doesn't stay in your brain. To hear the full conversation, head over to EnglishAcrossThePond.com. Bye.